Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Paralegal Voice here on Legal Talk Network. I'm Carl Morrison, a certified paralegal devoted to law and your host of the Paralegal Voice. I'm a certified paralegal and paralegal educator, and I'm devoted to not only the paralegal profession, but to all legal professionals, from legal support professionals to paralegals and to those whom we support, attorneys. I'm devoted to helping others enhance their passion and dedication for the paralegal profession through entertaining and engaging interviews. My guest today is Lisa Myers, J.D. Lisa is the Legal Studies Program Director for Northwest Career College in Las Vegas, Nevada. Lisa began her legal career as a paralegal, advancing as a senior paralegal for various family law, personal injury, and corporate law firms in the Las Vegas community. Lisa also had the opportunity of working with various firms in the United Kingdom and Canada, connecting legal research and blogging. She obtained her bachelor's in criminal justice, continuing on in her education, obtaining her Juris Doctorate and LLM. She further completed her fellowship in Washington, D.C., Carson City, and Las Vegas, Nevada. She has been actively involved in Nevada's legal community for nearly 18 years. She has a passion and love for the law, teaching, and politics, and continues to be inspired by her students each day. Lisa began her career at Northwest Career College with a small number of students in a developing paralegal studies program. She is now the director and an instructor for the Legal Studies Department, which is comprised of both the Paralegal Studies and Criminal Justice degree programs, which has maintained a placement rate of 100%. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me, Carl. It's truly a pleasure to be here discussing this wonderful topic of paralegal education. Before we begin, we would like to thank our sponsor, Thomson Reuters Firm Central, cloud-based legal practice management that streamlines your day and automates non-billable administrative tasks so you can accomplish more with less. And also NALA. NALA is a professional association for paralegals providing continuing education, voluntary certification, and professional development programs. NALA has been a sponsor of the Paralegal Voice since our very first show. We would also like to thank Boston University, offering an online certificate in paralegal studies. If you're seeking a professional credential or just want to further develop your skills, Boston University provides an affordable, high-quality 14-week program. Visit paralegalonline.bu.edu for more information. And finally, serve now a nationwide network of trusted pre-screen process servers. Work with the most professional process servers who have experience with high volume serves, who embrace technology and understand the litigation process. Visit servenow.com to learn more. The goal of the Paralegal Voice is to discuss a wide range of topics important to the paralegal industry and share with you leading trends, significant developments and resources you'll find helpful in your career and everyday job. My guests will be engaging and informational with a little bit of fun thrown in. Our topic today is paralegal education and legal education trends with Lisa Myers, JD, Legal Studies Program Director for Northwest Career College in Las Vegas, Nevada. So let's talk a moment, Lisa. Glad you're here. Glad you're talking about a very important, very dear to me subject is paralegal education. And so let's talk a moment about you, Lisa. Um, how did you get into the profession? Thank you, Carl. That's a great question. Um, I have a passion and love for the law and for politics. I was extremely interested in working in a law firm, learning more about the law, and truly wanted just to help people with their legal struggles. It was really a drive to help the community, really, the public at large. That truly what, yeah, that's, uh, that was my driving force. That's great. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, wonderful. So looking back on your start in the career, where did you think it was going to lead you? I mean, did you have any like, oh, this is where it's going to take me type of? Um, I honestly thought I'd be practicing as an attorney in a law firm, as an elected official in our state legislature, or as a lobbyist, lobbying for, you know, important issues mm -hmm. um, for citizens. I fell in love with being a paralegal, though, and um, I had the want to continue my education by completing my law degree. Um, I was provided with an opportunity in a law firm, worked my way up, and then was provided with this incredible opportunity at Northwest to teach some incredible young people. You and I are, are very much cut from the same cloth, I think, in that, you know, the drive and passion for the law, but also to help others, to give back, to, you know, see and, and promote um, not only our profession, uh, the paralegal industry, but the law itself. 
I would agree, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yes, you and I have had many conversations and um, it's just, it's very fulfilling to be with our students and you know to teach them about the law and something that we love very much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's special. Yeah. So when you first started in the legal industry, <laughs> What were some of the unexpected hurdles? We all have those little unexpected hurdles that kind of get thrown to us. Life loves to throw the curveballs. So what are some of those hurdles that you had to deal with early on? Um, Oh my goodness, there were many, there were many. I was met with some rather strong and interesting personalities, um, mainly from the attorneys, uh, managing partners, great demands with condensed specific deadlines, um, challenging clients, emotional clients, the greatest I would say was the need for actual hands-on experience within my course studies. Great, great. Here's a fun question I'm gonna ask you. If you had to describe yourself in three words, what would they be as it kind of relates to your passion and drive with the law and the paralegal industry and teaching? This is a difficult question for me, Carl. (laughs) Like I said before, Um, I'm pretty humble. It's definitely easy to answer this when it's in reference to others, but I would have to say caring, passionate, and positive. I would say caring because I I try to care as as much as possible with everyone, um, especially our students. Um, I love them incredibly and I want to see them succeed. I'm passionate about teaching the law, um, politics, really anything to do with life itself. I'm very driven. And then I try to remain as positive as possible. Things could always be worse. So I always try to, you know, think of the best um, while still being realistic, but um, having that energy and that positivity, especially in the classroom, especially with students, you want to bring that energy to them and and be as happy as possible. You know, it's funny when you say and talk about and hearing you talk about, you know, positivity, um, you know, uh, as it kind of relates to me in the industry, um, too many people, and, and as a fellow educator, I see it with students over nearly six years that I've been teaching, that students already have kind of a skewed perception of the judicial system <laughs> and trying to teach students that we have one of the best judicial systems in the world. It's not without its flaws, but there's a lot of great things about it. And so, yeah, sharing that positivity with students, I think I agree with you, is is vitally important, so. Yeah, it is um, because you wanna make sure that they don't have a jaded perception before going into their career. You wanna make sure that they stay positive and, and enthusiastic and clean, fresh attitude and you know perception about the industry. And so, when you have individuals like you and I going into the classrooms, they they catch on. They it's infectious, you know, and they're going to integrate into the legal community and have that same attitude, that same mentality. Right. What experiences have best prepared you uh, for your position as the program director at Northwest Career College? Over your time in the legal industry, what really has best prepared you? I would say my experiences while being a paralegal in the inception of my legal career, it continues to provide a great perspective as to what is needed to be a successful paralegal and what is to be expected, further aiding in the development of our curriculum. Students also see just how excited I am about paralegal studies and how much I enjoyed being a paralegal. I also think being an office manager in a law firm was a great experience for me to assist in managing our department overall. And I share kind of some very similar backgrounds, you know, providing seminars and webinars over the years. I have always wanted to give back and uh, being offered a position as a teacher, as an adjunct instructor in a paralegal program. For me, I took all those experiences and what I went through in school and was like, okay, I want students to be able to not have the same things that happened to me in school. So if I can help them in that aspect, that's, you know, I I rely heavily on my experiences as a paralegal in educating them. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it helps um, to give them real life scenarios. Right. Um, When we discuss that in the classroom, they know, you know, different circumstances to expect and we can talk through them. So I think it further prepares them. And honestly, it just makes them kind of 
you know, feel a little bit more confident and less nervous right. about going into their career. Yeah, great. So, yeah, so that definitely helped me prepare. Yeah. As a fellow educator, I love teaching. I love to teach. I'm crazy. For me, like I said a minute ago, it's a way to give back, quote unquote, pay it forward. What do you like best about teaching? Oh my goodness, everything. I enjoy witnessing the enthusiasm and progression of our students each and every day. It is absolutely incredible. It's the most fulfilling experience, truly. I enjoy being able to discuss the law, engage in our classroom labs and activities with the students, um, and truly just being able to get our students excited about being a paralegal and working in the legal field. Yeah, I love to teach. And for me, what I love best about teaching is just seeing their faces, knowing that they're just sponges and they're wanting to learn as much as possible. And I tell my students like the very first night of each new introduction course, I tell them, I'm going to crack your skull open and I'm just going to pour info in it. So be prepared. <laughs> so I love to, to see their reaction. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a pretty incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you like least about teaching? Dun, dun, dun. Well, I love everything. I miss working in a law firm and being in the courtroom from time to time, but I wouldn't change it, honestly, for the world. Our students and our college is a special, a wonderful and exciting experience each day. You know, I, I hope I have the pleasure of continuing with teaching, especially at Northwest, um, forever. I think I would just have to say, or just to add, Sometimes it's very trying on the heart, you know, to see students struggle with their personal life issues, especially when it affects their course studies. That's that's a difficult thing. So I would say it's not something that I like least. It's just something that, you know, is trying. It's difficult, you know, to see them go through things like that. Right. Yeah, it is. It is tough yeah. to see them struggle and you just want to help them and hold them and, and you know, be a support to them, so which is great. What's your funniest classroom story? Oh my goodness. So I thought a lot about this, Carl, because there are so many funny stories. Our students are absolute characters. They have varying personalities and they always bring something new and entertaining to each of our classes every day. One, one of our funniest classroom stories I would say um, most recently was one of our advanced paralegal classes. Um, we were engaged in a mock trial, which are always really fun and engaging with the students. Students love those. One student was playing the role of the state, the prosecutor. And uh, he all of a sudden just took on the role, talking in a really deep voice, very deep commanding voice, <laughs> adjusting his belt all throughout, you know, pacing through the mock courtroom, walking up to the jurors and to the audience, um, you know, pointing and, and being just, you know, very direct with his argument. And, you know, I just didn't expect this from this quiet, you know, very, very intelligent, but very quiet young man. And it was just, it was so exciting to see, to witness. And he did very well, but it was just comical because he just took on the role, um, his perception of a very commanding, um, very seasoned prosecutor trying to, you know, win this case for the state, for the good of the people. And it was just, it was funny. It was just so funny. And I, I can't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's funny because I have over my years as a paralegal being in the courtroom, civil lit defense side, and there are and I have seen many plaintiff attorneys command and act that over the top. So it's it's funny to hear the student just took that on, you know, himself and just kind of, because I've seen it many a time. <laughs> you know, and it's not something that he made up. I mean, this is, yes, this is an absolute in the courtroom. So it was just kind of, <laughs> it was comical. And then, you know, I'm sitting back thinking of all the different attorneys that are directly like this. Right. Like, oh my goodness. So it was <laughs> it was a great experience, a very funny day, but um, he was great. He won his argument. That's great. He won his argument. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got another question. You know, there are many paralegals that have made a career for themselves by working 
under the tutelage of a, you know, a, a supervising attorney, a competent, talented type of attorney, without having to go through any type of formal paralegal education and program, why do you think a paralegal legal education is important for a prospective paralegal to go through to become a, a successful paralegal? This is a great question, Carl. Um, that was actually me. I had no formal education or training as a paralegal. My bachelor's is in criminal justice, and I continued on you know, to law school. I was very proactive and just learned as I went in the law firm. I would you know, search through files, ask a lot of questions, carry around my legal pads, and just wrote down everything and anything that the attorney was saying in any direction he was giving to me. I would say legal education is extremely important for paralegals, though. It provides education ethics, which is vital, you know, to their career. Procedures of the court and laws, research, writing skills to better prepare them for their success in their career. They will then be of greater value and and therefore more secure in their position. I do believe legal education, which includes actual practical hands-on experience, researching, drafting legal correspondence, legal pleadings, Um, experiencing guest speakers, field trips in the court for hearings and tours is a great benefit for them. And again, vital uh, to their success in the industry. It's time to take a short break for a word from our sponsors. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion about paralegal education and legal education trends with Lisa Myers. Are you looking to advance your career? Do you know someone who wants to enter the paralegal profession? Boston University's fully online certificate in paralegal studies is a fantastic option. It's affordable, takes just 14 weeks to complete, and is led by accomplished faculty who teach employer-focused legal skills like legal research, writing, technology, and more. Visit paralegalonline.bu.edu for more information and to download a free brochure. That's paralegalonline.bu.edu. .bu.edu. NALA means professional. NALA offers continuing education and professional development for all paralegals. A NALA certified paralegal credential has been a gold standard of professionalism for over 30 years. More than 15,000 paralegals have this certification and nearly 2,000 have achieved the demanding advanced certified paralegal. NALA works actively with all those in the legal field to promote the value of paralegals and to advance paralegal professionalism. See more about why NALA means professional at www.nala.org. Welcome back to The Paralegal Voice. I'm Carl Morrison. My guest today is Lisa Myers, Legal Studies Program Director at Northwest Career College. Lisa, before the commercial break... We were discussing formal paralegal education and the importance of having that type of uh, education for a paralegal. Do you believe that paralegal education is important even if a paralegal chooses not to go through a formal certification process through one of the national associations like NALS or NALA or uh, NFPA? I do. Aspiring paralegals and legal professionals need to obtain a great educational foundation to be successful and feel confident as they begin their new legal career. However, I believe we should encourage legal professionals to achieve those certifications to solidify their education and training. And again, they'll be more of a value to a law firm. Certification. I'm a huge proponent of a national paralegal association. I carry all but one. And that's the next one. I, I tell my students I'm collecting my alphabet soup, so I um, uh, will add that to it. But I'm a huge proponent of a certification, having a actual uh, certification, those letters behind your name. Do you think paralegal certification is important for students who do complete formal paralegal educational program? Do you think they should go on and do it? Yes, absolutely. Um, I encourage our students to review the practice tests, I encourage them to um, attend the meetings, get as much information as possible about these certifications because I honestly think that it's necessary. It's, it's vital to their career. You know, of course, certification is not mandatory for a paralegal. We're truly, it's a voluntary basis. And uh, what better way to demonstrate to an employer, to your peers, 
that you've taken that additional step because it is voluntary to study, to spend the money, the time, the resources to invest in a certification. So yeah, I'm with you. I think it's vitally important that a certification happen. So Lisa, the legal industry requires paralegal students who complete a formal legal educational training be skilled and actually be ready to enter that law office setting or that corporate environment and be ready to handle those real cases, those real clients, those, you know, real outcomes that happen immediately upon graduation when they enter the door of their employer. So how does a paralegal program, an actual program, be innovative enough and escape that traditional lecture kind of basis where an instructor stands up and just barks education to the students? How does the program actually develop that innovation to get out of that teaching model and actually do something that ensures students are ready for the quote unquote real world? So that's a fabulous question, Carl. Um, I have a great answer or rather a solution uh, to this. Hands-on experience within each scheduled class time. That's vital. Uh, Integrate the review of material with actual in-class lab assignments, having students prepare legal correspondence, prepare those various pleadings, Uh, review discovery, uh, review deposition transcripts, draft outlines of deposition transcripts, review cases, draft discovery on those cases, Um, having students conduct research, um, utilizing various sites as Westlaw Next, or drafting IRAC case briefs, breaking down those cases, and and truly their way of uh, critically thinking, having them properly cite case law, properly cite statutes and codes and rules and amendments, discuss those amendments. This is a definite proven method to further prepare students to be successful in their legal career. Um, This is exactly the type of format that we utilize at Northwest and it's been proven successful and we absolutely love it. And uh, the students have just flourished in our program and in their careers. So you're a huge believer in the the lab-based teaching model. Lecture is important, but also the hands-on is important as well. I am a huge, absolute proponent of lab-based. We still review, we still have that lecture component um, that hasn't been forgone uh, whatsoever. But what I found is that you can integrate the two beautifully and um, it actually works much better. You're further reviewing the material. I have students that if, let's say, for instance, we're drafting legal correspondence in the class, I'm walking around with them discussing each of the components of the legal correspondence, you know, the why and what for, while they're drafting their legal correspondence after reviewing a case. So again, you're melding the two and it's like a a light bulb goes on in their heads and, and they just have a better understanding, you know, of, of the material and, and what it's what it's utilized for. Um, So that's gonna better prepare them in their career. I totally believe 100% in lab-based and I have taught in the traditional lecture, but I have always included a quote unquote lab component to my time with the students, whether it be a role-playing exercise where, you know, break them up into teams and each person's either the paralegal or the client and you have to do an interviewing type of process. Or one thing that I did that I absolutely loved was actually taking the class and splitting them in half right down the middle. And each side had a case and each side was plaintiff or defendant. They drafted their, you know, interrogatories and requests for production Mm -hmm. and exchanged with the other side and they had to respond. Doing that hands-on, I think, is really important to help them you know, reinforce what they're learning and reading, but preparing them for when they get out into the quote unquote real world. Absolutely, I agree. So as a program director and a full-time instructor, wearing both hats there. Yes. (laughs) How do you help your students succeed in the legal industry? What resources, skills do you give them to help them succeed? So I would say um, a similar response to our prior question, you know, I, I try to give them all of our, the resources and tools possible. You know, we review billing with them. We review all the technology, all the trends in technology, various pleadings for various areas of law, 
criminal, civil litigation, family law, bankruptcy, integrating field trips, guest speakers of actual paralegals or attorneys or legal professionals within the industry, drafting those legal correspondence, drafting the Iraq case briefs, actually citing cases, researching, you know, having them actually work on those cases that have went before the Supreme Court, um, having them follow up with those cases. So I think all of those things, you know, really helps them to further prepare, you know, to be a successful legal professional. Paralegals have to be resourceful. They have to know how to go find the answer. I had a partner that referred to me as his bloodhound because (laughs) he would have a problem, a question, an issue with the client, with the law. We did a lot of medical work and he would say, Carl, here's the question, here's the issue. Now go find. All right, bloodhound's on the trail and it's going to figure it out. And paralegals have to be and have to know uh, the resources. Uh, So I think it's important to help prepare them with that. Absolutely. If I may add to that, we prepare for our students a wonderful introductory e-binder. And our e-binder has so many resources, lists of, uh, you know, different programs, uh, different associations, different websites for the Supreme Court, the Nevada State Legislature, you know, the courts, anything and everything for them to not only conduct that sort of research within the classroom, but also on their own. And then we also encourage them to be proactive. So we'll give them little exercises or activities where we don't answer the question right away. We have them do kind of a search and find or a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. And it really does help for them to locate those answers themselves because you're absolutely right. The attorneys look to us as paralegals to figure it out. Right. And find the resolution. So... Yes, I I agree. So kind of change a little bit here, kind of our trends that we're seeing. There's been many articles that have come out and podcasts here on Legal Talk Network that's been presented on the subject of access to justice and its importance. There's a need out there that for those that are unable to afford, you know, the traditional attorney rates, those fees, but they need services of a legal professional, and there's a gap. It's a known fact, there is a gap out there. Absolutely. Do you think paralegal education, such as what's kind of going on in Washington State, the limited license legal technician program, or now Utah is developing it, so our neighbors around Nevada are developing it, do you think that uh, paralegal education can help fill the gap in the need for those who can't afford attorneys? And how do you think paralegal education can evolve and grow to really provide legal paraprofessionals with the necessary education to help the public at large? Well, you know, I, you know, I've been kind of on the fence with this one because it's, you know, you have to be delicate with this, you know, because on one hand, you're speaking of a paralegal that assists an attorney that works for a licensed practicing attorney in either a, you know, corporate setting or a law firm. And then on the other hand, you know, we have so many individuals in the community that, like you said, cannot afford the attorney's legal fees and cost. Sometimes they are quite exorbitant. So I'd like to see us bridge that gap, of course. Do I agree with what um, the state of Washington is doing and now, you know, Utah? You know, I do, but I think that, you know, there should be some sort of you know, regulations in that because you want to make certain that, you know, the paralegals or these licensed, you know, legal technicians Mm -hmm. are not overstepping the boundaries and giving full legal advice and incorrect advice Mm -hmm. um, and further, you know, harming those individuals because then that's in the end going to cost them more. Now they have to seek out Um, a licensed practicing attorney or some other recourse. So I I think there needs to be a balance, but I think with the right regulations, similar to what, you know, the state bar has, you know, within Nevada Rules of Professional Conduct or, you know, ABA, I think if we can ensure that that's being upheld, um, you know, and these, these paralegals or legal professionals are being monitored, then I think that it would, it would be a great, something really great for our, for our public. 
And I agree. I mean, resource. it's a matter of that delicate balance, ensuring mm-hmm. that these uh, different regulating bodies that develop these limited licensed paralegal practitioners in Utah, I get all the, the terminology all mucked up there, but, you know, that these think about fully the ethical ramifications and ensuring that uh, these technicians understand their their role. Mm -hmm. But it's exciting to see that we are in a change, that evolution's happening within the legal community and the industry, that there may be a new role that does a little bit more than a paralegal, but not quite that an attorney does, but help fill the gap, whether it be family law or landlord tenant, those individuals that really they need some limited help, but they can't afford an attorney, but they can't do it on their own. They don't understand the process. So having someone help them, I think is, is exciting. I think it is. It's it's very exciting. Like you said, it's, um, you know, we are evolving and I think we need to, you know, these paralegals or legal professionals will be working in a limited scope. And I, I think it's needed. You know, you look at the medical field, we have licensed you know, medical assistants, licensed massage therapist, you know, licensed um, pharmacy techs. So, you know, in all of those varying fields, we have licensing. So why not for paralegals? So good topic and segue here to my next question. And it's a hot button topic. And there's many schools of thought on the subject. But do you think paralegals as, as just us, I know we were just talking about the limited license legal technicians, but paralegals alone, do you think paralegals should be regulated, actually licensed or registered or whatever you want to call them within the state that the paralegal resides? I would say, and again, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm leaning more towards yes. I think it would help paralegals to make certain of you know, what they can and cannot do, what they should and should not be doing. I think it would further solidify their knowledge of the rules of ethics. I think many paralegals head out into um, the field and they're unsure as to what's expected of them and what the ethical rules are. Is this within the code of ethics? Can I do this? Can I not do this? If I do this, what's going to happen? So I think if there if there are some regulations, some definitive regulations, I think that would help. Honestly, I'm on the fence as well. Probably get some emails on it, but I think there should be some sort of uh, investigation, further investigation within state bars, state supreme courts to investigate some level of regulation. I know it's uh, it is truly a hot button topic, and there are two really big schools of thought. Yes, it needs to be regulated. No, it does not need to be regulated. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I I tend to lean on on the yes column more than the, than the no column, just for the, the, the reasons you said exactly. Yeah, you know, the fact of the matter is paralegals are working on these files. They're working on these cases. They're, they're, they play an integral role into these clients' lives. Paralegals are truly the glue that holds everything together for that law firm or that corporate office setting. So I think it's important, but then, you know, I would, I would also, you know, consider defining what regulating them actually means. So, but I think something, something needs to be accomplished right. in the years coming. Right. One last quick question here. Where do you see the future of legal education in five to 10 years? I would say more hands-on experience, certification, uh, more encouragement to actually be certified as a paralegal. Not so much regulations, but certifications to, again, further justify your education and your experience, your knowledge in paralegal studies. So yeah, I would definitely say hands-on experience less of a lecture-based learning and more of the actual practical experience. So again, these paralegals are going to be more successful and confident and head out into the field and, you know, accomplish their their goals. It's kind of like a doctor, you know, when they go through medical school Mm -hmm. and actually book knowledge, but then they have to start their rotations and rounds and they're learning more hands-on how to deal with the patient and the same thing, I think. Uh, for paralegal students. I think we'll see more of that hands-on 
you know, base. Well, absolutely. And just as in law school, we're not taught to, you know, draft pleadings and really the procedures of the court and so many integral aspects of, of the legal field that, you know, is needed to make us successful. Um, I think if we integrate more hands-on experience period across the board in all of our studies, regardless if it's in the law or medicine or, you know, some other field, I think it's important to really give students that real world experience. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The last question, if a student or an individual, I should say, before they become a student, but if an individual is actually interested mm -hmm. in getting into the paralegal industry and they start <laughs> investigating a paralegal program, what should a prospective student look for in the program? So the best advice or direction I would provide would be uh, determine if the program is in fact a degree program, um, degree or certification program, whether or not those credits are transferable, I know many of our students would like to transfer their credits and, you know, further their studies, you know, further to a bachelor's or even law school. So that's important. Whether or not the majority of the program is on campus or online, that's huge. And um, whether or not the program provides that hands-on practical experience uh, within the classroom and also feedback. Um, is there, you know, a professor instructor that's going to give that consistent feedback right. on their work product? That's important. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Lisa, I could talk for hours on this, um, but really thank you so much for joining us today. I think this has been a very great conversation about paralegal education. If a listener would like to get in touch with you to discuss paralegal education, how would they reach out to you? Well, thank you once again, Carl, for having me. Um, this has been a wonderful experience. Um, if anyone is interested in speaking with me, please feel free to contact me on my direct line at 702-401-4440 or via email at lisa, L-I-S-A dot Myers, M-Y-E-R-S at Northwest Career College dot edu. I would love to discuss any of these topics with you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you doing this. So let's take another short break now, but don't go away because when I come back, I'll have some news and other paralegal tidbits to share with you. Looking for a process server you can trust? ServeNow.com is a nationwide network of local pre-screen process servers. ServeNow works with the most professional process servers in the industry. Connecting your firm with process servers who embrace technology, have experience with high volume serves, and understand the litigation process and rules of properly effectuating service. Find a pre screen process server today. Visit www.servenow.com. Firm Central cloud based legal practice management software for solo and small law firms provides a single online location for all of the tools you need to manage client files and perform client work and offers unrivaled integration with Westlaw. With Firm Central, you can securely store and organize documents and case files, manage time tracking and billables, and collaborate with clients through a secure client portal from anywhere there is an internet connection. Welcome back. The following are some um, upcoming paralegal and paralegal related conferences worth noting. And more importantly, you want to make sure you want to attend. So be sure. And if you haven't registered for one of these, you do so and truly attend. Be an active participant in our industry. First, the American Association for Paralegal Education will be having their 2018 Super Regional Conference in Memphis, Tennessee, March 9th through the 10th. Come network with fellow paralegal and legal study educators and gain valuable education. For more information, go to www.aafpe.org. NALS is hosting Adventure Tulsa 2018, April 5th through the 7th at the Hyatt Regency in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Come gain CLE, but not in the traditional setting. CLE will be held in various locations, including the federal court, local college paralegal classrooms, and other non-traditional settings. But it's not just CLE. Fun events will be mixed in as well. Seating is limited, so be sure and register at www.nals.org. 
Of course, I'm going to be in attendance and I'm looking forward to networking, learning, and having lots of fun. National Federation of Paralegal Associations is having their 2018 joint conference, Promoting Paralegals in the Bluegrass, April 27th through 29th in Lexington, Kentucky. Attendees have the opportunity to share and network with professionals regarding association leadership, certification, and regulation within the paralegal profession. Go to www.paralegals.org for more information. And of course, save the date. NALA is having their 2018 annual conference and expo July 11th through the 13th in St. Louis, Missouri. Don't miss out on a great opportunity to network, learn, and have fun. Of course, I love St. Louis, so I will be in an attendance there also. So be sure and uh, attend NALA's conference. And finally, we come to the listener's voice our segment of the show where I answer you, the listeners, questions. If you'd like to send me a question or comment to be read on air, please send your email to me at devoted, the number two, law, at gmail.com. That's devoted to law at gmail.com. Today's question comes from a paralegal student in Kansas. They write, Dear Devoted to Law, I'm a paralegal student and getting ready to graduate. I have heard about certification, but I'm not sure if I should take the test or not. Will it help me get a job? And is it worth it? Thanks. Sincerely, questioning certification in Kansas. Well, questioning certification, I I will tell you, I get this question asked of me as a paralegal and as a paralegal instructor, especially from students. And I tell my students, uh, definitely, You definitely want to get through the program before you even consider setting for a certification exam. They are challenging. They're tough. They're robust. You need to have that knowledge under your belt. But I'm a huge proponent of certification. Number one, you are demonstrating to yourself as a student and as an individual that you have gone above and beyond what's required of you. Number two, it demonstrates to the employer that same thing. An employer is going to look at it and go, hey, this person, because it's voluntary certification, has done more by having this certification. It also, having certification, all certifications require mandatory number of continuing legal education hours in which to maintain your certification. And and as such, it requires you to stay on top of what's going on in the industry. So you are keeping your knowledge uh, fresh, you're learning new things. And last but not least, because you have to go to associations or go to uh, seminars and you meet others, whether it be attorneys, judges, paralegals, you network and networking is important. Keep the questions coming. Definitely make sure that you send your questions to devoted, D-E-V-O-T-E-D, the number two, L-A-W at gmail.com. That's all the time we have today for the Paralegal Voice. If you have questions about today's show, definitely send them to me, devoted to law at gmail.com. Stay tuned for more information and upcoming podcasts for exciting paralegal trends, news, and engaging and fun interviews from leading paralegals and other leading legal professionals. Thank you for listening to The Paralegal Voice, produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit legaltalknetwork.com Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS and find Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn or download Legal Talk Network's free app in Google Play and iTunes. And reminding you that I'm here to enhance your passion and dedication to the paralegal profession and make your paralegal voice heard. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer 